All right, so we're gonna uh, talk today about the regular and predictable pullbacks from a trend. I get a, a lot of questions from people, uh, particularly they, they're they trend traders and they have always learned or heard that the trading the trend is the safest and easiest thing to do. My experience was quite the opposite. Trend trading was uh, in, invoked a, quite a bit of stress and uh, I was not successful at it. But what I noticed in the process of studying trend and trend trading is that there are regular and predictable pullbacks from that trend. And so people ask me, are you a counter trend trader? And, and I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'm not trying to go against the trend. We're working within a trend. All trends have a series of pushes and pullbacks and pushes and pullbacks on the inside the trend. Well, if you look carefully enough, you'll notice that there are regular patterns inside that trend. And if you understand the patterns, you know what's about to happen next. And, and that's what we're really good at. And we're, we're really good at it and we've been doing it a long time. So we've been able to simplify the process. We're gonna talk about that whole step-by-step -step process today, okay? So quickly, I wanna go through this so that you understand what it is that we're gonna be doing um, and what we're looking for and what the indicators are telling us. And then we'll go to a little uh, workspace that I have set up for a training session so that I can show you different scenarios of trade setups and then you can ask me questions. I can set up scenarios for you if you have questions and answer how I would handle that particular setup, okay? So let's start out with the very first step of qualifying a trade setup for one of our trades, okay? And we're gonna be talking about here the trade we call the rock star trade setup and I'll and I'll go into more detail that in that uh, up in just a few minutes. So what we're looking at here is we want to have the very first qualifying factor that tells us, hey, we might have an opportunity here. The very first qualifying factor will be when price has been somewhat channeling and then we break out of that channel, okay? So we're looking for a breakout from the channel and then a strong push, almost straight up, okay? And you see these bars, how they're changing colors? These bars are our momentum indicator, okay? Our, and, and will tell us that exhaustion is likely imminent because momentum cannot be sustained indefinitely, okay? So the lighter the bars get, the higher the probability that exhaustion is gonna be setting in. And that's very important to us. Exhaustion is very important. So the breakout from a channel is gonna be our first alert to pay attention and let's see if we make it to step two, okay? So step two is gonna be identifying weakness in price. And for us, that's when price is either overbought or oversold. We're gonna we're gonna show on a uh, on our charts if price is overbought, the outline of this bar will turn a pinkish color. If it's oversold, we have it set to turn this bluish color. Now you could up, you could do whatever colors you want. These are user definable. This is how we do it in the trade room. So that you don't have to look away. You'll notice that all of our indicators are right where your eyes are looking. You don't have to go look away to confirm what you're seeing. Everything you need to see is right there. Okay, so we're, we're now on step two and we wanna say, okay, we've seen some strong momentum Strong momentum cannot be maintained, and now we're seeing weakness set in. Okay, and that's, our, that's the indicator we call OBOS. Now, so let's say we've got step one, step two. They're, all, they're both in place. We're watching for a potential trade setup. 
Now we want to see that price is likely being manipulated by the big boys, okay? The big boys, you know, the the HFTs, the high frequency traders, or the hedge funds, or the people that have all the money that can um, have these big supercomputers and trade these vast number of contracts at an incredible speed, okay? And that's why this is called speed tick. The speed is what we're watching, okay? Because they know that volume is being watched by everybody. And they don't want everybody to know what they're doing. This manipulation takes place only because they they have the ability to place trades very quickly because they're either inside the exchange or right next to the exchange uh, because they get uh, certain considerations by the exchange to provide liquidity, okay? So to uh, so that the rest of us have something to trade. But if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the orders being processed are being processed at a rate that is faster than us retail traders sitting at home on our, you know, our home internet trading off of our PCs could possibly place trades, okay, knowing the number of traders in the market at that particular time, okay? So when that happens, we want to know when this manipulation happens. And we're not going to do anything about that manipulation. We're going to let it happen. Because remember, uh, on Thursday, we talked about the fact that reaction to the market is what we're looking for. We know what's going to happen next when uh, the markets choose to react to this manipulation. And the funny thing is, is we react the same way every time. Okay. Now there's a, there's different threshold levels for these speed ticks. The ones we're looking for are going to be these, the threshold one and threshold two. These are typically the, the ones that will be generated by a single manipulation, an HFT or a quant or, you know, whatever, whatever mechanical manipulation is happening. So these are the ones that I'll typically be looking for. Sometimes they go a bit beyond that and the speed at which the orders are being processed are kind of, we're kind of not sure if it's a single manipulation or these HFTs or, or hedge funds or quants, they're fighting against each other, which is possible. So that could increase the speed to a point where we're, eh, we might want to be a little bit careful. Threshold number three has a different circumstance. That's when the orders are going through so fast, we don't really have a good handle on why the orders are going through so fast. It could be manipulations or it could be something else. It could be a news event, whether it be scheduled or unscheduled, that causes price to, um, or the orders to be processed much, much more quickly than what you would consider to be average. Okay, and that's what we're all, everything that we do and, and what most trading systems are about is what's typical in the markets. So when things are atypical, then we have an opportunity. So we're looking for, for step three, to see if price is being manipulated. We also have an indicator called the ricochet. This is based on the same information that these the speed ticks have but rather than a speed threshold of of the orders being processed it's actually an acceleration of orders is what they what we're um we're showing with a ricochet okay so the ricochet is used uh, a lot to confirm it's used a lot for confluence and it's used in one of our setups that we're going to talk today called a naked speed tick. Okay. 
So we're up step three. We're, we've got um, a speed tick and we're showing weakness. We're showing strong momentum, but we still don't have a trade set up. Okay. There's a couple other things that could be going on inside this bar. Ideally, these things will be going on before placing a trade. Inside each bar, we're measuring how the volume is coming in. And we can tell when volume is coming in a certain way and then it and then something starts happening. Price starts kind of churning. You get a you get a lot of buying going up and then suddenly the sellers jump in. So you notice that uh, this was called laying in wait. What I this this topic here is called laying in wait. And essentially, these sell there were sellers sitting up in here in this area, waiting for price to get up in here. Now these buyers don't know about these sellers that are sitting there. So we're measuring the way the volume is coming into this bar. And if it comes in a certain way, we're gonna print this right here. And, and there's several different thresholds for that indicator as well. We have a one, two, and a three that'll print. And that'll tell you, you can qualify that trade based on what type of price action you want to see inside that bar. You have a churning uh, action, a climax action, and a, uh, a bar that would be a combination bar. Um, I personally will, I don't care which one is on there. It could be any of these because that's a good indication that price is going to pull back. Now, these, these traders are that are up here waiting have potentially have resting orders but then again potentially they're not sitting there uh, resting they're just waiting for us retail traders okay so it's like these we're just we're just cruising along and all of a sudden out just here they come and whammo they they uh they basically attack and we have no idea that they're there and next thing you know, price starts to drop, okay? Now, we want to see good, strong potential for exhaustion. And to see that, we're going to want to see this breakout. And you'll notice the size of the bars as we start to increase in price. The bars go from relatively normal, just regular bars, and they start getting bigger until you ha suddenly have this up thrust bar, okay? This is going to be indicative of major exhaustion setting in because, like in most things, you cannot sustain momentum. And if you go look at any chart, I'll show you something here in a few minutes. Go look at any chart, you will see this happening over and over and over again. That you'll see this sudden push and then exhaustion set in. So when I look at this, I'm thinking of, you know, something like this, this poor girl, she's doing everything she can. She has run as fast as she can and that's it. That's as far as she can go. She's not going anywhere else for a while. She's totally exhausted. Price does that. No matter what, it becomes exhausted. And that's as far as it's going to go until it has a chance to pull back and rest. Okay? At the exact same time that this exhaustion sets in, we're looking for divergence. Divergence is where our rock star is going to come in. Momentum has changed directions before price does. You notice that, that that runner was still moving forward, but getting slower and slower and slower until she just couldn't go anymore. All right, and here's my favorite example of, of momentum. <laughs> 
changing directions on you no matter how hard you try. You just can't seem to get any traction. So for a lot of us, this is our this is our trading account, right? You keep taking one step forward and sliding back three steps. So as much as price wants to go up, momentum is is constantly pushing price back and eventually momentum will win at least to some degree okay momentum constantly winning and that's that's what we know is going to happen that's the edge that we have okay so the only thing we have to do then is just trade it right we're going to place a limit order at the open of this bar or better okay Sometimes the bar will open and then pop up here a few ticks. And if you can get in here, so much the better. Now, I say a limit order because you, on a very small trade, we're only going to trade for five ticks. I mean, that's, that's what we do in the trade room. That's what I do. There were some traders that trade for more, some traders that trade for less. We're looking for this pullback right here, this few ticks that we have a real good handle that it's going to happen when we have this confluence of events. So we're going to put in a limit order. Now, if price opens and drops suddenly and you put in a market order, Chances are, if price is dropping suddenly, you're going to take slippage and you're going to actually get filled down here. And that could have been the whole move right there. So until you get, become real qualified and work really hard at this, you're going to want to use limit orders only because the worst thing that could happen is price takes off without you. You get left in the dust here. You missed a trade. That's okay. There will be more. But at least you didn't take a whole bunch of slippage on what we're looking at for a pullback here. Now, I've been doing this a long, long time, um, 11 years now, the same trades, same setups. So I've gotten really good at, uh, I practiced for a long time, have a lot of experience. And I recommend to people that are going to be doing this for a while, Start out with the limit orders, but as you increase the number of contracts you're trading, you can scale in those orders using a combination of limit and market orders, okay? But you've got to start small. You've got to start learning from the beginning, okay? So that's the seventh step. There's our point of entry. So what have you done? You've started to build confidence. Now, I don't know about most of you guys, but I never had confidence in my trading when I was trying to be a trend trader. I never knew if price, when it was pulling back, if it was a reversal or a pullback or a retracement, I never knew. I, it always scared me when price was going against me. And my emotions would run really high and I'd get scared. And sometimes I'd jump out knowing full well that I shouldn't. Sometimes I'd stay with it and get my butt kicked. Uh, it never seemed like I was making the right decision. It always seemed like whatever I decided was the wrong thing. So I started thinking, well, if I could just win some small trades, let me prove to myself I can be a winning trader. So I started looking at these small, quick trades just to build my confidence. Turns out it's actually a real profitable way to trade. Nobody had ever told me this before. Okay, People were saying, yeah, you gotta, you're going to have to buy low, sell high, trade the, the trend. But they never told me you, you really can't make money trading, trend trading on a single contract because that's all I could afford to trade when I was learning. They'll, they'll admit it to you later if you put their feet to the fire, but you cannot make money trading a single contract on 20, 30, 40 tick targets. 
So once I figured that out, I realized, well, I got to come up with something else. So I started these small trades. And that, 11 years ago, turned things around for me. All right. So before I move on, any questions? We're going to move on to uh, to the little workspace I have set up, and we'll show you some scenarios. Any questions? Uh, one minute. Seven tick stop. So the we use one minute charts because it. We're looking for a reaction right now, right? We know we want to stay out of the markets as much as possible. We don't want our money in the markets because the markets are being manipulated, right? You don't know when that manipulation is going to happen. So why do I want to keep my money in where there are people who are trying to take it from me? So I want to trade on a very fast trade. I want to get in and out oh no absolutely not we do it every day we trade in the trade room every day there's about 50 people come to our trade room every single day and we trade these trades every single day there's no way it's too fast and the reason it's not too fast is because we have the indicator to tell us hey something is about to happen you need to get ready that's what i just showed you in this step-by-step -step process Okay, you just have to pay attention. Um, now we're trading the futures, and so we have specific futures markets that we trade where we have ample time to get into a trade if we watch the setups. Okay, so and we make sure that we've qualified the setups. We're sitting there on this, if you look over here, on this bar, during this bar, look at all this information. Now, all of this information printed on this bar. This bar opened and looked like this bar when it opened, okay? And as it grew, all of these indicators popped up onto this bar. Now we're watching this bar and we're going, okay, we're up to step six now. All I need is at the open of this bar to have a rock star and I'm going to short it right here. So all of, there's no other, we're not looking anywhere else. There's nothing else to, that we need to qualify that trade. That's all. That's it. That's everything we need right there. Okay, let me go ahead and go over to the uh, workspace. So you'll notice here, I have named this the optimal rock star setup. So the, uh, I, you notice I call this optimal. And that just means if everything possible is in place, this is a perfect setup for a rock star. Now, are the markets always perfect for us? No. Do we get optimal setups always? Absolutely not. We do get them, but we have to make some allowances sometimes. And I'll talk to you about those allowances. Uh, again, those allowances are based on your risk tolerance. And I'll talk to you about those in a few minutes, but I first want to, again, go over what an optimal setup looks like. Now, re real quick, I want to go over here, and I want to show you just a random chart that I pulled up. And I want you to see, okay, so let's just look at this trend. This is a trend, right? This, this is a short-term trend. But you'll notice, okay, price is going up. Then it goes sideways, pulls back a little bit. Goes up, pulls back. Goes up, pulls back. Goes up, pulls back. Okay, it's a rhythm. It's a cycle. It happens all the time. On the way down, goes down, pulls back. Goes down. Look, this is a downward bias, right? Look at any chart. You're going to see this. 
these are where we pick up the information. We pick up the information here that this is about to happen. Then when this drops, this is about. So, you know, this is not just random. Uh, that happens sometimes. These pullbacks happen over and over and over again. They will always happen, which is what's nice about what we're doing. It's not like anybody ever bought a, an auto trader and it works great for a while until it doesn't uh, or traded a particular trading system that, that is just awesome. And then suddenly one day it just doesn't work anymore. And you just can't understand why. Okay. Because things change. Now, absolutely the markets change and absolutely what we do will change to some degree. But we have the ability to tune the system as the changes are happening in order to uh, uh, maintain our high level of success, okay? So what we're looking at here is price is channeling, Okay, this is very typical. Remember, this is probably an area of accumulation or distribution. Then we get a strong push out of this channel. And you'll notice the bars start turning colors. They start going from black to a, a gray, to a lighter gray, to almost white. Remember the runner. The runner with this overbought condition that runner has exhausted and run into a brick wall. And I didn't show a brick wall in front of that runner uh, that she just couldn't go anymore because she's hit this resistance. This is ideal scenario right here. We see that price has pushed as far as it can. The sellers have been up here waiting for us to push this far and get exhausted. They're not exhausted. They jump in right here, and the momentum has already changed directions. So this bar opens with the rock star, and typically, according to Marshall, 82% of the time, <laughs> price is going to pull back here. Okay, so this is an optimal setup for us. Now, are things always optimal? No. So what would be so this is this is the little scenario thing where I have where I can move things around. If we had something like that. Now we didn't have that big push, did we? We didn't have that real strong sense of exhaustion. So this is where after you have some experience, you can say, you know what? I have enough confidence in this setup for my risk tolerance levels to go ahead and short it right here. I'm going to short this on the open of this bar if it has a rock star on it. So we call this a one bar push. It's still got to have a speed tick. Still got to be overbought. It's nice to have this pullback alert, although it's not required. And then we get the, the uh, rock star. What if we had this? The big blue speed ticks tell us that that the price in this bar was, uh, or the orders in this bar were being processed so fast that not only is it unlikely that retail traders are trading it, it's, it's even more likely that this is generated by a news event or an, un, you know, scheduled or unscheduled where either people are panicking or, these machines start firing off against each other um, or basically what it is, is our inability to understand what it is. So we 
relax. And we just go, okay, I'm not taking that trade. Okay, as it turns out, because of that, we have uh, the rock star set up in our on our our uh, default settings is if we get a big blue speed tick, the rock star won't print. That's the way we do it in the trade room. You can, if you want to, inside your rock star, set it so it'll print whether it's a big blue speed tick or not. Okay. Those settings, the speed tick settings are inside the Rockstar to, to tell the Rockstar whether to print or not. Okay. Now, what about if this bar opened above the resistance? Is this a, a Rockstar trade? Wait, let's. Now, we still have a one bar push, but for the sake of argument, let's say that one bar push qualifies in your trade plan, okay? Is this still a setup without the resistance behind it? Is it still a rock star setup? It's still a setup, so Steve, you're right. It's still a setup, but it's no longer called a rock star. Somebody once upon a time, uh, before we started trading what we call naked rock stars, started calling it that because the there was no resistance behind this setup, but it worked anyway. So I wasn't trading it for a long time that way. I was only trading it if it had resistance, but we were missing opportunities because so many times without this resistance behind the trade, this trade would win anyway. And remember what we're looking for, this resistance is that brick wall that that poor runner just can't make it through, okay? Hard enough to just stand up, but to break through a brick wall too, and we've proven by having this bar, it hits this line of resistance and then pulls back and opens here. This bar just proved, I mean, this line, this resistance line just proved to us that people are respecting this line as resistance. So then we have much more confluence to take this uh, and confidence to take this as a rock star trade. But over time, we noticed, man, those just work anyway. So we started calling this a naked rock star trade. A naked rock star trade does not require resistance. But what we do require is one of two conditions to exist for a naked rock star trade. Now, ideally, we're gonna have this. And don't pay attention to the colors of the bars. I'm just, you know, getting this set up. Ideally, we're gonna have something like this before a naked rock star. But again, we don't always have ideal. We also might have a situation like this, where we don't have resistance. We don't have an overbought condition. We don't have a pullback alert. We don't have a ricochet. So this could be for some traders that have a fairly high risk tolerance, this could be a trade setup called a naked rock star. But generally speaking, we're going to want to qualify that with more confluence. We want to see something like a pullback alert up here. What does that pullback alert tell us? Remember, that tells us that this is a either a climax bar or a churning bar 
or a combination of the two to tell us, okay, on top of all of this information and on top of this divergence, it tells us that the sellers are very active up in here and they weren't down in here. They became very active in this bar. They weren't active here, they weren't active here, they became active here. Now you might qualify this in your risk tolerance as something that you can trade. Okay, so that's a qualifying factor to qualify this for a naked rock star. Now, even better would be to have an overbought condition on top of the pullback alert. My rule, personal rule, is I only need one or the other. I prefer to have both for a naked rock star. But I only have one or the other, and that'll qualify this as a trade that I'll take. And what I'm going to do is on the open of this bar, I'm going to short this. And I'm going to do it with a limit order. Well, I'm going to do it with more than that, but because I trade multiple contracts. But new traders, or until you've mastered this, you want to learn how to do it with limit orders. And you work your way up to a combination of limit and market orders because of the potential for slippage. We're only looking for a five tick target here because price channels, it pushes, it channels, it pushes, it channels, it pushes. Now, that channeling or that little bit of a pullback before it channels is our sweet spot. And I don't know, when I place this trade, I'm not expecting for this to be a reversal. Okay, that is not my expectation. See, we have an upward trend here. My expectation is this price is going to keep going up. But I know it can't go up anymore until it pulls back, retraces a little bit, consolidates, and then goes up again. Okay? I know this because I've studied blank charts. This is really easy for you to study too. When we're all done here, go open your platform, go to a, uh, your favorite instrument, put it on one minute candles, and look, you're gonna see the same thing going up and going down. It's been right there in front of you all this time and maybe you haven't even noticed it. But that's an opportunity. And really all you need in trading is a slight edge. For example, we all know about gambling in Las Vegas. We call it gambling. Las Vegas, the people that run Las Vegas don't call it gambling because it's not gambling. It's gaming to them. It's the a gaming industry. They're not gambling at all. They know they have an edge, albeit a slight edge but they have an edge and they just exploit that edge day in and day out. And they know without a doubt, they're going to make money. Their edge is very small. We have an edge here and it doesn't look like much. It doesn't look like much when you just go in five ticks, but I promise you, you can build great confidence. And when you have great confidence, you have the ability to make this a successful system for you. Okay, we have a lot of traders that have been doing this for a lot of years. Okay, so let's go back and look at this scenario. Is that a good trade setup? Look like a good rock star trade? Why not? Remember, this is called the naked rock star zone, right? It's in the zone. Remember, we're looking for a strong potential for exhaustion. Does this look like a strong potential for exhaustion? 
even though we have an overbought candle and a, um, a, a pullback alert speed tick, this just barely, remember that channel I said? This just barely broke outside of this channel. It really hasn't moved very far. It's still inside this zone. So if I get a rock star and it prints inside this zone, I'm not going to trade it as a naked rock star trade. Too many times this is, you know, it still will pull back sometimes. So it'll just be an opportunity that we just didn't take. We're looking for the highest probability. How about now? We trade that. Some traders will. I will. This is still a rock star trade now. It is no longer naked rock star trade. This is naked. This is not. We have resistance behind the trade. And the resistance, this pr price has to hit this line first before I'm going to use that as resistance. If price never made it to those, actually those, those zone, and then this bar opened here with the rock star inside this naked rock star zone, I still consider this a naked rock star because price hasn't proven to me to react to this line yet. Right now, it's just a line on my screen, but and I have and price hasn't touched it yet. So I haven't seen that this that this line has value to the traders that are trading right now. They haven't proven it to me. So I'm still waiting on this. I will not I will consider this a naked rock star trade and this open inside this zone. So I can't I won't trade this. I'm going to wait. If price has hit the line and then pulled back and opened below it, well, that's enough confirmation for me that this line has value. That price went up, tagged the line, and pulled straight back and opened below. There are plenty of scenarios that we can go over if you have questions, but this is the, is the crux of it right here. And we see these over and over and over again every single day. And the interesting thing is I, I have done, uh, when I was a struggling trader, I went to trade rooms and I do trading sessions or whatever, and they talk about all this stuff that I would never see um, in real trading. I'm like, well, why, you know, I, I don't know what to do here because that wasn't, that wasn't, what I'm seeing now isn't what I was shown. I saw that all the time. Now the naked, the rock star, and the naked rock star are our favorite trade setups because they provide the most confluence, particularly adding in this divergence. So that's a naked rock star. And that would qualify because it's not inside the zone. We also have it so the rock stars print in a different color if it if it opens inside the zone just to make it that much easier to identify. So th the rock star is our favorite trade setup because we started adding divergence to our speed tick trade setup. Now the speed tick is when the, the speed tick trade is when my trading went from getting better to killing it, and and I was able to go full time as a full time trader when I started trading the speed tick trade setup. The rock star is a um, is just a uh, some added confluence for a higher probability, and I'm always looking for more information, uh, as much information as I can find inside these bars to tell me there's a high probability of something going to happen here. All right, so the speed tick trade is something we still trade because it was so good. All right, so the speed tick setup 
looks very similar. There's not a lot more you have to learn. It is, it's, it's really almost the exact same trade setup as a rock star, but we've, we've removed the qualification of having divergence. And all we have here is again, as a strong push, an overbought condition, a white or light blue speed tick. And this is absolute must. There is no way you could take a speed tick without major resistance. Okay, that that is a given. There's no options for this speed tick without this resistance. This bar has to open five ticks or less from this line, okay? So if it opened, if, if uh, this bar was up here, price touched the edge of this zone, which is okay, and then pulls back and then this opens, you know, maybe down here at, is there two of those? Or is that my, oh, okay. Um, we have uh, indicators for that. It's called, this is called our FT reset line. This is one of our indicators that is in our packages that we have for you. This FT reset line also has relative strength numbers at the end of the line. For example, this would be a very strong line with a relative strength number of 205 at the end of it. We would expect if price approaches this line in a strong way like this straight up, that this line is going to react really well or, or price is going to react really well to the line. So those are our FT reset lines. We call them FT reset because every time price hits this line, it resets this number to zero. So then every, if, if price hits the line, this line will never be as strong as it is when it first gets hit after an extended, extended period of time because people still don't know what, what to expect from this line. Okay, so they're a bit reluctant to cross that line. But after price hits it for a while, it becomes weaker. I, you know, think of it as like a, a fly on a screen door looking for a hole. It keeps hitting, 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 hitting that screen door until it finds a hole and gets out. That's kind of what price will do if this number is, is particularly high the first time it hits it. So this is our FT reset. This bar open, and let's say it's six ticks from this resistance. Well, if we have a seven tick stop, that's not really giving a, this line much chance to work, is it? it? It'll come up here and maybe price, uh, you know, we took, we're at six ticks, we entered the trade. Price comes up here, tests this line. And you know when price tests these resistance lines, sometimes it'll go across a couple of ticks and then it pulls back, right? Well, that, you're gonna get stopped out without really having the opportunity for this line to help you much. So we want price to hit the line or at least inside this zone and this bar to open below it five ticks or less. Now we have a trade, okay? Now we have a trade. We're gonna short it right here as a speed tick trade setup. How about now? Anybody? How about now? I'm not convinced that price is just going to blast right through that line and keep going because this big blue speed tick has me concerned that something else is going on potentially. All right, I'm going to throw you a curveball. What about that? This bar opens right here. What am I going to do? Nothing. No trade. 
Why? Because I had a big blue speed tick here that's already given me a heads up that something wacky is going on in the markets. And just because it has the orders have slowed down, they were still going really fast just a minute ago. So fast, I really didn't have a handle on what's likely to happen next. So this is just telling me that this is a slowing process. So this, to me, is just an extension of this. So I don't trade this trade. I wouldn't short this here because this big blue speed tick disqualifies that trade. Okay? Here's the next scenario. Am I going to trade that one? I will absolutely trade that. I will sell it right here. Because this bar did not have any speed ticks on it. Everything happened inside this bar, and then it stopped, and it went back to normal trading. Normal orders being processed. So as long as there's a bar after a big blue that has no speed ticks on it, then the next speed tick I will trade. Exactly. It broke the chain. It's a different manipulation than what was going on here because everything stopped. Okay. Price went back to being, the orders went back to being processed at a typical rate. So now I've got a new speed tick, which is likely a new manipulation, has nothing to do with what was going on over here, and I will short that right here and how about now nope no resistance we'll never take a speed tick trade with no resistance 